Hello folks, this is Margie Roy at 3dcuts.com and today I'm going to do the tutorial on how to make my horses grazing square shadow box. This shadow box is the third in my illuminated square shadow box series. I've done this one because a lot of people have requested that I do my star-shaped horses in the pasture in the square format. So I've done that. Um, it is in a wooden frame that you can purchase from Amazon. This is called an 11 inch frame. It is 12 inches on the outside, but 11 inches on the inside. Okay, I'm going to take this apart so that you can see the basic construction technique here. What you make is a stack. The cutting file includes these spacers plus all of the layers and the front piece. We are going to be constructing this stack, which will fit into the shadow box. A lot of people have asked me if this could be downsized to fit into a nine inch square shadow box because those are much more uh, easy, readily available. It is problematic because of the battery pack and the battery pack has quite a bit of depth. You cannot fit that in a nine by nine inch shadow box because they are not as deep. If you wanna to change to a different type of lighting, then you can downsize it, but this will not fit in a smaller shadow box because of depth. You need, I think these are two and a quarter deep, and you need that for these shadow boxes. The type of lighting that I use are these little sets that I get from Amazon. There is a link on my website. I love these because they don't burn out really quickly. There are 50 lights in here. I buy them in packs of five for a very reasonable cost and um, it has a lot of options. So these are the kinds of uh, LED fairy lights that I like to use in this kind of project. You should go to my website at 3dcuts.com for links to all of the supplies that I use, the different papers that I use, the frame and the lights, plus added information on how to cut this out. It's not all in this tutorial. This is just an assembly tutorial. So be sure to go to my website. Let's get started. I have already cut out all of my parts. When I make a shadow box, I like to do all of the details on each layer while it is still flat. So we're going to start with layer one. That's the front layer. And we're going to get all the pieces that go with that. There are two grass pieces. There's the background piece. There are, there's a fence and there are two stumps. There's my other stump. So we get all of those pieces and make sure the textured side is up on all of them. And we're going to start this assembly. First, I'm going to glue the back, the stump onto the back of each of the trees. The purpose of this is just to give a tiny bit more dimension to the stump so that it shows in the shadow. It doesn't blend into the background. Now let's take the background and move that to the side. Turn this over. The glue that I'm using is Art Glitter Glue. I have put it into one of these uh, containers that I get with a small nozzle. I get these on Amazon and I'm going to put just a thin layer of glue here. I like these because I can really control my glue with them. This goes onto the back of this tree, like so. And this stump goes onto the back of the tree with leaves on the back side. Okay, next we will take the background 
and the pine tree gets glued right onto the front here so that it has some dimension. Turn it over and put glue onto the back side. Match it up and adhere it in place. The next piece that goes on is the fence. It will go in uh, behind the birch tree and over here, this little end gets slid behind the pine tree and glued on the back side, but you want to position it so that the bottoms of all of the posts are on the ground. Don't do it like this where it's floating in the air. So you put that in place and then you slide it down until we've got, that's the one there that gets um, floating in space. Then you take these and you just put a little glue behind each of them and glue it in place. Turn it over and on the back side, a little bit of glue goes under each of these tabs to make sure that they stay back there. like so. Next goes the birch tree with leaves. This little branch lines up right here with the uh, knobby right there. It should just overlap the edge a little bit on the top and a little bit on this side, and then the trunk gets glued down. So I'm going to put glue on the branches here. And on the back of this, just a little bit along the top edge, and this straight edge over here in the places that are straight. And then a little bit on the bottom trunk down here. Those are the places that touch. I'm going to again line this up, getting that branch right at the bump, and then placing this on and adhering it into place. Now, there are two grass pieces to go in front. The shorter one goes on the left side over here and goes on first, and the longer one goes on the, or excuse me, the shorter one goes on the right side here first. We don't need to glue down the actual pieces of grass. It's fine if they blow in the breeze in the shadow box. I line up the bottom corner and this outside edge here for placement. And then this one gets put on the front here. Okay, there's level one. The last part on the first layer is to put on the colored mat. I like to add a colored mat just because it makes it a little richer in appearance. The color of this is your choice. You can think about the interior of the room this is going to be displayed in. It does not need to be this green color. To adhere this, I take a piece of score tape and I stretch that across the top here. Peel it and place this, matching outside edges and corners. What's important is that this seam in here shows about the same amount of ivory all the way around. Layer one is now complete. I'll put that to the side and start working on layer two. Layer two is the horse layer. There are two pieces with the large horse, one piece with the small horse, two pieces for the mane, very tiny, and a piece of grass. 
I can see that I didn't entirely weed out the spaces here, so I need to make sure that they are all out. The first thing I'm going to do here is get the main pieces on because they're tiny and I'll lose them. You will notice one of the horses has an eye cut out and one does not. The mane and the forelock go onto the horse that has the eye cut out of it. Take my glue, put just a tiny little bit on the back here, and this gets glued on the back of the horse's neck behind the ear, like so. The tiny little forelock goes right between the ears, right there. So let's put that on. Good, a little detail to my three-legged horse. We need to add the fourth leg here. So this will get glued right on top of this horse. Put the glue onto the back side of the piece with the eye. You only want it on the three legs, not the fourth leg. Put the glue on the horse. Now take this and put it on top of the horse, lining them up carefully and perfectly, and adhere them together. Those two layers serve to allow us to get some more detail into the horse, but it also adds a double layer down here, which helps us hide the lights. Now the grassy slope is going to get added in front of the small horse. Notice this does not go all the way to the edges. You want to position it so that it is centered left to right and it is up that same amount from the bottom. Here the glue goes onto the back of the glass, grassy slope you do not have to worry about gluing down each little ruffle there along the top. Just some glue in the center. Position it like so. This horse is going to be placed in front of the back one with pop dots, but we're not going to do that till we start installing the lights because we need to get lights placed between them. That's all we're going to do in layer two right now. We'll place that to the side and start on layer three. Let's talk for a moment about layer three. Layer three is the one with the barn on it. You'll notice here I have a notch out of it. The pattern you cut has a notch out of it. As I do the tutorial, it does not have a notch until near the end when I realized the notch was missing and I just cut it out. Know that this is how yours looks and that is correct. It should have the notch out, but don't worry about it in the tutorial that mine does not. Okay, layer three includes a couple of clouds, a fence, the barn and the barn roof. Again, make sure you've got your textured side up on all of them. The barn gets glued on top of the barn that is there. And the barn roof gets put on top of that, just to give it a little more definition. Now this fence is going to get put in the middle of the field about in that location. I like to take at this point my front and line it up because that's what's going to hide it. I can put it up higher here so that it comes out between that branch. Remembering that my horse is going to be right here and I don't want that to hide it. So right about there is the location of the fence on the back hill. So take these off, put them to the side, check that out. Okay, add some glue. And put this into place. 
That's layer three. Behind layer three goes layer four. And at this point, I'm going to place the clouds. It's easier to do now than later. This is your own choice as to where you'd like them. We will use pop dots on the back of these. Three should be fine. Press into place. And the same on the other cloud. There. So layer three is complete and can be placed to the side, and the back layer is complete and can be placed to the side. Now we're going to start working on the side brackets that hold all the layers together. If you look at my example that's already made, what I'm referring to are these pieces here. They keep things spaced correctly in the final construction. These pieces in the cutout are the side brackets. There are three that are identical and one with the notch out. This is the bottom one, these are the three sides. When you cut out the side brackets, use a lighter weight cardstock. For the layers, I used an 80 pound cardstock, but for the side brackets, I used a 65 pound cardstock. They are very close in color. There are links to what I used on my website. They don't have to match perfectly, but these need to be the same color. In the tutorial online, I have put two documents to help you with this. Before we start doing anything, we are going to apply score tape to certain lines here. And I've put a diagram just to help you, although I will walk you through it on the first one here. First of all, I've put some clues onto each of these pieces. One is this tab and the other are these notches. Notice here the tab is out to the left and away from us. I'm going to take one of the plain ones without the notch and start with that. It says put score tape here, here, here. I like applying the score tape before I assemble while things are still flat. It's a whole lot easier. So on each of the pieces, you're going to follow this diagram and apply score tape. If you want, you can number them to help you. I'm using quarter inch score tape. I like using it because I get to put it on in advance and peel the backing at the time that I need it. It also keeps my fingers clean. So on this one, I'm going to put score tape in row one I'm going to put it in row six as well. That's the one below the notch. I'm going to put it in seven. I'm going to skip one and put it in nine. I'm going to put it in 10. And I'm going to put it in 14. I'm now going to repeat that on the other three. On the one that has the notch out of it, I will put it in both sides as if it were solid through, but cutting in the middle. Okay, I have now completed putting the score tape on all four of the side brackets. I'm just checking to make sure I haven't skipped any. Looks good. Now it's time to fold them. With the score tape down, you are going to start on the edge without the tab. The tab is further away from me, and you are going to fold one away, up, two up, three up, four up.
like so. Then turn it the other direction, keeping the score tape away from you, and fold these. One up, two up, three up, four up, five up. On this side with the tab, you're going to fold five up. The other side, it was four. Now on both sides, the next one folds in the opposite direction. So you've got this way, and then this one goes in the opposite direction as well. And that way, you will be making little rectangular prisms at either end. And then in the middle, these two fold in the same direction. In the end, the places with the score tape are going to form these little notches that will hold our layers. You will see that each of the pieces that has a notch cut out of it is going to be on the top. That's the process for folding all four of these pieces. There is a diagram on my website to help show you how this goes. And if you look at it, this will match that little line there. I'll do another one for you. Let's see, you turn it so that the score tape is down on the side without the notch, you do one up, two up, three up, four up. The side with the notch, you do one up, two up, three up, four up, five up. Then the next one goes the other direction, back, and this one goes the other way. Repeat this folding process with all four of the side pieces. Okay, I have finished folding all four of these side brackets. If you would like to test whether or not you've done it correctly, turn it over. There should be two very definite ribs coming up and then everything else will fold in on itself. On each of the pieces, you can compare this to make sure that you've got these nice two ribs and then the other sides folding in. If you don't, go back to that part and refold one of the good things about folding is if you fold it the wrong way, you can just fold it the other way and that's all fine in this project. Now it's time to start assembly. Assembly starts from the front to the back. Now layer one, the trees, gets put on the inside of the glass. So we're going to start with layer two, which is the horse in the distance. We will take our we will take our side, side brackets, and the first thing that I want you to do is peel the end and roll it around unto itself to make the end space. It will make a rectangular prism here on the end. Now, we're going to do this on both sides, so it doesn't matter which one you start with. I have a letter opener, which is a great tool for me to use to press this in place to hold it. And I'll do the same thing at the other side. Peel off the last one, roll it around to itself, line it up there, roll it over, and make this nice rectangular prism on the other end. These are what helps us space the layers correctly and hold them through time. So a rectangular prism on either end and the two V slots in the center. I'm going to repeat that with the other three sides. I have finished folding 
all four of the side brackets. I am placing them in the square that will be my final composition. I have the one with the notch closest to me, then the other three sides. Notice these tabs. On the bottom, it's out to the left, up, to the right, and down. That's important so that you don't get them flipped. I'm going to take layer two, which is the one that has the small horse in it, and I'm going to start applying the side brackets to it. The bottom of it is going to get squeezed right here, and this rectangular prism will be on the front here. I'm going to peel the top. I'm going to center it between the two, and this is going to get placed carefully right into this notch. It doesn't go up tight. It comes back just a little bit. I want it to be centered about like so and placed right there like that. I'm going to flatten it out, take my letter opener, and press it in place. Okay, the same thing happens with this one. The one with the tab is not the one I use, but I make sure that the tab is not in the same corner as this tab. I peel the first strip here, and it gets positioned like so, and rolled in carefully and tacked in place. And press. The top one, make sure that the tab is sticking out in that direction. Peel the first one, the one that's away from the tab. And I'm going to position it right on the top here. It's easier to do from this side. Three sides done. Let's go to the fourth side. The tab is going toward the bottom. I peel from the edge that does not have the tab on it. And this one will get positioned right here. Again, it's easier to work from the other side. Carefully position it. Press it in place. Now, check that out. Four sides, all looking good. I'm going to peel these one at a time, and it doesn't matter which order you do them in, and fold it back on itself like that. The side walls are starting to come up. I want to take my tool and press these again. See how this one's coming out? It didn't press well. Let's press against it. Make sure that that score tape is well adhered. Okay, now it is a good time to fold the tabs in toward the center. We don't need them yet, but it's easy to fold them at this point. And now let's start applying our lights. We apply them as we build up the layers so that we have easy access. This is my example. And first we're going to put a thin row of lights down that'll go behind the horse. We will put the horse on and then we will put a thin layer 
in front of the horse so that the lights shine up between them. One of the biggest challenges in this whole project, now that you have the side brackets on, is keeping the lights from getting tangled. I'm going to start unwinding these carefully. Now, these lights are spaced a little bit too widely for good light diffusion in this project. So I am going to take the first six lights. So one, two, three. Number four, five, and six, I'm going to fold back so that they're equally spaced between those two. So I've got them closer together. That group of lights is going to go behind the horse layer. Here is my horse layer. I want to keep them fairly low, about a half inch up across here, and I'm just going to use scotch tape to hold them in place. I'm going to tape this right onto the wire and then tape the wire right to the front of my small horse layer. I want to keep the tape low so it won't show above the layer in front of it. Yeah. Now I'm going to put pop dots on the back of my horse and place it onto layer two. I don't want any pop dots in this lower portion. I would like some behind the horse and along here. Okay, there I've got my pop dots. I'm going to center this right in here and it will get positioned. The corners down here will match and I'm going to turn it over so that I can press these together. Don't want that coming undone later. Squeeze. Okay, there's layer two. Now we're going to take this and carefully unwind about six more lights and they are going to get positioned across the front here in front of this horse so it'll shine up behind the front layer of grasses. Again, they are spaced a little bit too widely so I will fold this back on itself Let's see, I better put that one out there and then bring this one back this way. Nope, those match up. I want the lights to be spaced in between each other. Yeah, like that. And then I'm going to position these so that they're nicely spread across the bottom there. And these, I do not want to be touching in the front, I want them to be touching in the back. So I'm going to take this and tape them so that they are to the back and not to the front. It is okay to get tape on this surface here that will not be visible. Now, if I take my layer one, it will get placed on here. All that should be well hidden. I like to take my stack and my lights into a dark space every so often and test it to make sure that I'm not getting any hot spots. If a light is too close to the front surface, it creates a hot spot. And that's a visual distraction in the final project. So I'm gonna take a minute here and go test this in the dark. You might wanna do the same. My test was good, now it's time to continue. 
If you did have any hot spots of light, you might want to remove things and adjust the light so you don't have little hot spots. Now we're going to get ready to add layer three, and that's the one with the barn. Our approach is a little different at this point. Let's take layer three. We're going to want to apply the lights to this before we put it in the stack so that we have easy access. So I'm going to put layer three behind this and I'm gonna kind of gently line up those inside corners, just visually. Doesn't have to be perfect, but this is just to give me an indication as to what my lights need to be below. I'm going to put a little mark in here and a little mark over here. My lights need to be below that by at least a half, maybe a full inch. This piece should have a notch out of it. I didn't do that in the cutting. Yours will have a notch out of it. I am going to take my notch out right now. Okay, my layer three now looks like your layer three. And I have these little marks that my lights must be below. Take layer two, fold it over, Oh, it's going to need to be on this side because it came out this corner. I'm going to apply the lights here. This will then get folded over and placed inside the stack. Put your layer three near layer two. It doesn't really matter which corner these came out of, but mine are on this side. And I'm going to start taping the lights right to this layer. I'm going to want about half of the remaining lights to go here. And I do not want to go too close to these edges because they will be in these seams here. So let's take my tape and let's tape that first one in place. Bend it up, tape a second one in place. My goal is to get light bulbs spread across here. So I've got one here and one here now. I'm going to continue placing them so that I get a nice array of light bulbs, probably closer to the top than the bottom. Although some of my coils may go down to the bottom. Now this is where things start getting tangled. Be careful. There we go. See how I have a light bulb, a light bulb, a light bulb, a light bulb, all kind of near the top, uh, taping the taping the copper wire down so that it doesn't allow the lights to bulge off of the back surface. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine on that side. Now I'll start moving over to the other side, always paying attention to my little pencil marks and making sure I stay well below those. There is no right way to do this. It can be one, any one of a number of ways. You just want to avoid the hot spots and you don't want to see the lights from the front. Okay, I'm going to lead my cable down to this corner so that I can transfer from one layer to the next. And it's time for me to again go into a dark room and test this. I'm going to put it together like so. This is just a temporary placement while I check out my lights and make sure I'm liking what I see. I'll be right back. 
Okay, I'm back, and I have about 20 lights on this, la this layer. They are all well below my imaginary line here, and it's giving me a good glow. So this layer, the barn layer, layer number three, is set to be attached to the side brackets. I am again going to start here on the left side, and I will peel the score tape that is closest to layer two. I will bring this around and I'm going to, I'm going to position layer three. Close to this fold seam, centered between top and bottom right there. Now let's turn it. Let's get things flat here. Make sure we're going to be placed okay. Yup, that looks good. So now I'll go to the top edge here and peel this layer of score tape. Carefully get this into position before I let it touch and adhere because it sticks quickly. There we go. Gently place that. Side three. Don't let it touch until I'm set. From the back side, we see lots of hot spots. That's okay. We just don't want to see them on the front. And then the two bottom layers. And after we've got that first side adhered all the way around, we can go back and do the second side all the way around. You want to make sure that these tabs go to the inside as you come around each corner here. Fold the tab in. Bring this down and squeeze it into place. Side three, bring the tab in, fold it down, squeeze it into place. Okay, each of these four tabs now need to be glued in place. I'll use score tape, although you can probably use art glitter glue for them. It doesn't really matter. But I will open it up, put a piece of score tape there, peel it, and position it square, and then stick it in place. This just helps hold things in position. It isn't visible but it does add strength. Repeat on all four corners. Okay. We have layers two and three and all the side brackets together. Whoops.
don't get caught in the trees there. Now we're going to add the lights to the backing. Okay, the backing has the two clouds on it, but this needs to be attached to a piece of um, mat board. This is heavier than cardstock. It's regular mat board. I just used a scrap piece that I had left over. The backside color doesn't really matter at all. And I am going to cut the notch out of it. This needs to be heavyweight cardboard because it's what's going to hold the battery pack in place. So this gets centered on here and the notch has to be cut out. So I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to mark the notch in the same place and then I'm going to use a razor blade to cut that out. I'm marking the exact location of that. I'll bring in my self-healing self pad here. Get my middle-edged ruler. and cut this out. This piece of mat board is just a little bit less than 11 inches square to make sure that it fits inside the back of the shadow box. That will be the back. This gets glued on here. I am going to use spray adhesive on the back side of this and attach it right here. I will go outside to do that so that I have good ventilation. I'll be back in a minute. That's adhered. Now we're going to start applying the lights to this back side. I'm again going to use the pencil technique. Center this over the back. And I'm going to not want the lights above here and here. Do I see those marks? Yes. So that's my imaginary line that the lights cannot go above or even close to. They have to stay well below that. So again, I'm going to, this opens up this way. It's coming through here. I'm going to leave a little more space this time. And I'm going to start adhering my lights to the back layer. And again, I don't want them too far, too many of them too far down. I want the light to shine up through. So let's tape them. Again, I'm working to space my light, lights out. Let's do a little test. I think it's looking good. Okay, I just did another darkroom test and I'm very pleased with how this is looking. I'm going to put this to the side. The next piece I'm going to put together is the battery box. This will hold this in place in the back of the design. All of the center dotted fold lines get folded toward you. and the little end tabs all get folded towards you. And then the three outside tabs get folded the opposite direction, away from you. Now I am going to turn it over and I'm going to put score tape on these four corners and I'm going to tape this little storage box together. Peel the score tape, fold the tab in, and make a nice square corner. Do that on all four corners. Okay, and now you need quarter inch score tape on these four tabs. Put 
Okay, this battery compartment is going to get adhered into this spot right here, like so. So I can peel this, place it in there, Same with the two side tabs. There we go. Now I'm kind of looking in the end here and making sure that this battery box is not pushing up against any of the interior layers. We don't want to force them to the front. So if they are, like this one here is a little bit tight, I'm going to trim this back just a hair making sure that there's no wires there, because if you snip a wire, your lights go out. Make sure the battery pack slides in there again. No problem, looking good. Make sure the battery pack fits in there, plenty of space. So now it's time to put it together and take a look. Let's put those to the side. Let's get our shadow box, bracket to the top, place the glass in. You should clean the glass if it needs it. Next goes layer one. That goes in right up against the glass. Next goes your stack. You place the open stack in here. battery pack goes in here. This cord you can wrap around and keep it inside the battery pack or you can tape it up around here. You do want to keep the cord, the uh, battery pack accessible so that when you need to change the batteries at some point you can do so. I'm going to just place it that way and then I am going to put some blue painter's tape, which I can peel off later, just to keep that from uh, falling around inside my shadow box. There we go. Now we'll take the back, place that in, put in all the brackets, and we get to take a look. Isn't that wonderful? Who are you going to give the horses grazing shadow box to? Which of my illuminated shadow boxes will you try next? There is the companionship with dogs series, the heart in the tree shadow box, and in the star frame format, I have available The Swinging Girl, The Nativity, The Deer and Forest, The Original Horses in Pasture, and The New Horses Grazing in the Square Format. Try some of the others, and happy crafting, everyone. <laughs>